Well, today's going to be a Ukraine day uh, on this podcast in just a little bit. I'll share my interviews with a Latvian-born Soviet-occupied uh, Soviet, uh, Latvia, uh, John Livens. He was a child as the Soviets not only occupied but destroyed Latvia. Uh, I have his story coming up in the next uh, podcast or so. And then... In the same episode, I'm going to talk with uh, Godfrey Harris about how his group, the Harris Reagan Management Group, is continuing to support Ukraine. How 250 years of America honoring that could be inspired by the way we are honoring Ukraine and saluting their resilience. And by the way, some news tonight uh, in Maripol, the combat mission to uh, fight off Russia has completed in Maripol, uh, Vladimir Zelensky honoring the soldiers that fought hard and uh, those that are seriously wounded, defending the civilians. Um, they are able to go home, if you will, and, and recover from their wo- their wartime uh, duties and, and injuries, and I'm sure Trump. So you've got that going on. It's a big day to talk Ukraine. It's also a big day to break it down that Abbott formula, Abbott and the uh, FDA are going to reopen at least one plant for formula making uh, to combat the shortage that we're dealing with there. I mean, that's tr- incredible how... I've seen on TikTok anyway, you have this idea that you have to order on Amazon from either the UK or another uh, country baby formula. Because the United States, if you don't order it from there, you're out of luck. If you order it from an American-made company, you're out of luck. So now you've got to uh, actually type in that you want baby formula from the UK or other countries on Amazon, just a little tip there, if you are indeed facing this shortage. And overall, I don't like to talk about things being a disaster, but it feels like it. It feels like everything at once is just sort of collapsing, I hate to say it. And I'm usually optimist, and I'm talking like that. But Abbott and the FDA opening... A production plant is a big deal. Obviously, as the baby formula shortage uh, amasses. And then the other storyline that I was uh, thinking about for a while now, if not all weekend, uh, it has uh, been actually Kathy Hochul. Yes, Kathy Hochul. And the poll numbers that are showing her in a disastrous territory politically. It's terrible. And to me, to me, the story line that Mark Penn wrote in the New York Post about how she's facing negatives in the 60% range on how she's handled crime. Now her hometown of Buffalo has this horrific shooting. And he believes, Mark Penn does, of the Harris polling, that a Republican could really take the governorship in New York. Look, I don't know how the Republicans are fair. I would like to see Tom Swazi have a shot at this. I really would. I think he was... A great executive. I think he's been a great congressman. And more so, more so here in the state of New York, I think that he's been um, very vocal against Kathy Hochul. And yeah, that unintentionally rhymed, but vocal against Hochul. And maybe for good reason. Maybe for good reason, because she's let Albany run over New York City, okay? She's let Albany run over New York City. And I'm going to pull it out right here. I've got I've got the stats for you really quickly on this five-minute fix. Cause, and I'm hoping to get Mark Penn on himself to discuss the numbers. But I want to 
show you this, share this with you, because the numbers on its face are absolutely, can I say, stunning. Here's what the Harris Poll found, according to Mark Penn. Yeah, I'm holding a newspaper. How about that? Um, the numbers find that Hochul's job rating is 36% approved, 57% disapproved, five points lower in New York State than Biden's national rating of 42% approval. We've got a president who's approved at only 42% and probably going to plummet. She received a 69% negative on crime and a 63% negative rating on the economic issues. She continued some lockdown measures till she felt the time was right. She's let Andrew Stewart Cousins and Carl Heasty run the state to the ground by stepping in and digging their heels on the great thing that is bail reform. Sarcasm. It's not a good thing. I have heard story after story. I can go on and on. But Mark Penn in the New York Post Friday saying, Dems beware. Hochul is toast in November. She's also yet to release her travel records. As she's been going to different places And, of course, has dealt with Brian Benjamin being arrested after claiming no cult, no more culture of corruption. Her own lieutenant governor pick was corrupt Brian Benjamin. Now she's got uh, Antonio Delgado. We'll see how that pans out. But the numbers of Kathy Hochul, and I wonder what they're going to be after her shooting in the hometown of Buffalo, will be. And here's the thing about it. She doesn't talk that much. She doesn't try to be controversial. But her numbers are showing she is not wanted in New York State. And if Lee Zeldin could really, really shine, or even Tom Swazi in the primary against Kokel, maybe someone else will be in Albany to take us to a different direction. Remember, she is the damn former lieutenant governor of Andrew Cuomo, who had to resign in disgrace. And we really thought Governor Hoko was going to change things up there. We really thought that? Come on. There's no really thinking that. Because corruption is corruption is corruption is Albany. And Albany is the core and the root of it all. And yes, Mayor Adams needs to step up down here and not go to L.A. or the Met Gala and focus on crime, but he's not been helped either. He's not been helped either. And so, Governor Hochul, you are in trouble. You are in trouble, and honestly, I don't know if the GOP is the right answer right now, but I do know that Tom Swazi could be a very intriguing pick for uh, governor. Just a hunch. Just a hunch. I'm Alex Garrett. Uh, a little bit of everything tonight, but I definitely want to get into the numbers of how... And there's more numbers. I, oh my gosh. I, I keep... And there's more news. Just as I'm talking, the FDA will allow more imported baby formula to hit the stores in the U.S. So things are finally opening up. Outrage has been spoken. And now FDA is saying imports from other countries are going to be allowed to help out the crisis. And one more thing about Buffalo. Governor Hochul, you thought you were doing an amazing thing, keeping the bills in the state on taxpayer dollars. Voters oppose this stadium and this funding 63% to 24% in the Siena poll against, uh, according to Mark Penn. 63 to 24 dislike this move. They want to know you care about the citizens, not about whether or not the Bills and their Florida-based owner and Josh Allen are happy with a new stadium. That's the icing on the cake for it all. If this shooting isn't, that stadium sure as hell 
and that proposal and that idea that taxpayers are paying for this, that's going to be the nail in the coffin of a Governor Hochul run in November, even in June, even in June. And the governor primary, while I'm on it, will now be June 28th, 2022. That's June 28th, 2022. Get your calendar ready for that. Obviously, independents can't vote. Open primaries. We need your help with that. Get these states open to independent voting once and for all. But I'm not changing party. I'm staying true to the independent cause and fighting for the independent cause. Because neither side is wetting my political palate. And I think uh, that's the majority of people's feelings as well. But 63 to 24% dislike this Buffalo Stadium. The numbers are going to go down for Kathy Hochul. uh, No doubt about it. Even though she doesn't say many controversial things, her actions are definitely turning off the New York state of mind. We'll talk to you soon.